Greetings and welcome to Opus Magnum. I'm Catherine of Sky, and this is the latest game from one of our favorite, favorite game developers, Zachtronics. You might remember their other titles, Shenzhen IO, TIS 100, Infinifactory, Space Chem, and many more. Opus Magnum is their latest release, which, like the other games, it combines logic and problem solving with programming. And I'm really excited to see this because this game has some really interesting um, ways that it does things in a very sort of mechanical clockwork way, which that that just visual really, really appealed to me. How did I find out about this game? Several people in my Discord were absolutely wild about it. So I thank you so much to Zachtronics for providing me with a key so I can let everyone else know about this amazing game. So I have not played the game at all. All I've seen is, um, I think I saw one person play the tutorial and uh, otherwise I just looked at, you know, the screenshots. So this is going to be kind of a blind playthrough um, and uh, we're going to see what adventures we're going to go on. So let's go to the very first thing that we need to do. Transmutation lab rules. Access is restricted to graduate level alchemical engineering students and faculty only. Any exceptions must be approved by the chancellor. Keep your student alchemist permit and sigil with you at all times while in the lab. No food or drink is permitted in the lab. Do not sit or lean on transmutation engines or their related components. Please keep the area clean for everyone else. That means you, Anateus. Who is Anateus? Let's go and see. We've got Henley Servan. I'm amazed you put off learning how to use the transmutation engine for this long. This is Anateus Via. I was concentrating on working by hand. You know that. Anateus, we're about to graduate. I know. That's why I need you to summarize all of this for me as fast as you can. Okay, so Henley is kind of instructing us on how to use these engines, apparently. Okay, new solution one. Um, let's go and click open. These are reagents. They are input materials for doing alchemy. This is a product. Your job as an alchemist is to build machines that combine reagents into useful products. Okay, to complete a puzzle, build all products. Press the play button below to start the transmutation engine. This is the instruction tray. Instructions tell a machine's parts what to do. Okay, so we can, I guess we press, what is this? This is a step, right? Pausing after the first instruction and this is the play, so it's space. Okay, so each of these materials is being put into places where they can possibly combine with others or transmute themselves into other things. Uh, and then we need to make the final product, which is right there. Okay, and it looks like we need six of six products to be completed and it is finished. Okay, let's return to the menu. We didn't get to do much ourselves. Hopefully we'll get to do something in the next puzzle. All right, understand so far? Of course, I knew this part was easy. That's why I never worried about it. I count you as a friend, Anateus, but sometimes you carry your genius alchemist act a little too far. Act? <laughs> I love this, this background. It is so gorgeous. Man, it's like lovely. All right, arms. So let's take the first and most important part, the arm. I understand. What's next? Wait, don't rush ahead. Let me go through the material. You need to see this. Okay. Place an arm below, setting the rotation and length so that the gripper is over the reagent. So this is our reagent, I'm guessing. Then add instructions to the instruction tray below and make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. All right, let's get this arm here. That looks like the base. Okay, how do we... Okay, there's a little dot. Aha, there we go. All right. So we need it to pick it up. Here are our instructions. Let's so we, we got drop, we have rotate uh, one sixth uh, along the edges of this uh, hexagonal shape, hexagon shape. Uh, and then there's rotation to the right or to the clockwise and anti-clockwise directions. And then this one is grab, right. We need to grab it first. So let's start with a grab. And this is our machine number three. So we'll go on this third line. Uh, so we do what F here? Oopsies. Is it hello? 
Okay, that works. Never mind. Um, and then we need to rotate it one, two, three. Uh, one. Let's see, D. Oh, you have to click it. I see. Right. So we want it to go one, two, three, and then drop. And then we'll go R for drop. Okay. And then we'll rotate it again to get back to the beginning. And that was what? What did we say? D. Or we could go A. Doesn't really matter, I suppose. There we go. Okay. Let's see if this works. All right. There it goes, and it's dropping. Rip and drop and back and drop and back and drop until we have six. Yes, nice. Okay. Right, so arms pick up and move elemental proxies around the surface of the transmutation engine. Right, and you control their behavior. With instructions, yes, of course. Of course. Makes sense. Now what do we got? Pivots. In some cases, you'll want the arm to rotate what it's gripping. You mean as opposed to the arm itself rotating. That's right. In those cases, you'll use pivot instructions. Right, let's go. Place an arm below, I guess in this little hex. Then add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move to the product output. Aha, see, this is very tricky. Not Well, not tricky, but um, sneaky, I should say, because when we pick this up, you would think, ah, oh, yes, it will just slide into place. No, it won't, because as we rotate around, it's going to rotate this guy with us. So we're going to have to pivot the thing. Uh, let's get our arm so over here and shove this to... Okay, I guess we can't connect to the, the orange one. I would have liked to connect to the orange one because today, as it happens, my favorite color is orange, but that's okay. We're going to be fine. All right. We need to rotate the arm one uh, tick here. So, or grab first. We need to grab, which is F and then rotate left, which is A. And as we go down, we want to rotate this clockwise. So that's E. And then we can drop this thing in. So that's R. So that should get it into the thing. And then we want it to go, the arm to go right back up. So we'll have it go to D. I think D. Right. All right, let's see if this works. Click. Excellent. It falls in the hole so nicely. Hey. All right. All right, your machine has successfully created the desired products. Good. All very straightforward and simple. How nice that it is so easy for you. Why, how long did it take you to learn all this? Let's just keep going. <laughs> so far, I'm really enjoying this game, I have to say. It is, um, it's very easy to kind of pick up, I think, well, We'll see if I'm still saying that after the first couple of real levels, but I've got to say that the tutorial is very, in, very, um, very well designed so far. All right. A piston arm is a special kind of arm that can extend and retract, and presumably there are instructions that control the piston. That's right. I'll demonstrate. Let's go. Place a piston arm below, then add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move it to the product output. Ah, we have something new. The reset instruction will make an arm drop any held atoms and reset to an initial rotation, length, and position. In this lesson, the drop instruction is disabled. You must use a reset instruction instead. So it's kind of telling us to uh, use less instructions by being more efficient and therefore being more efficient in terms of amount of instructions processed. So if we see here, we have one tile between the base, where they want us to put the base anyway, one tile between this and these, this has two tiles. So we do need to get that piston organized. Okay, there we go. Now we're gonna have to pick it up first, which is F, I think, there we go. And then we're going to, maybe we'll turn the arm anti-clockwise yes anti-clockwise a twice and we will retract the arm one square so s and there's no drop they disabled it so then we'll use c there we go okay hopefully this will work let's see if it works okay grip retract drop yeah there we go fantastic 
really cool. I love the mechanical nature of this game. I really do. It's like, it's so cool to watch. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Factorio, like seeing inside an assembler. This is really cool. All right, so I see. Piston arms can reach areas you can't with a normal arm. That's what makes them so useful. They cost a little more than regular arms, though. And I can use the reset instruction to make an arm return to its initial state from wherever it is. That's convenient. Just remember the reset instruction takes the same amount of time it would take to issue those individual instructions. Well, yes, of course it will. Of course. All right, tracks. It's our next puzzle. What's next? Next, we have tracks, which are like little paths you can place on the board. It's easier to show you. Of course it is. <laughs> Right, create a track between the reagent and the product, then place an arm on the track and add instructions to make it pick up the reagent and move to the product output. So they give us, uh, us some different um, examples of how you can use tracks as like a little lightning bolt shaped thing. Um, and then this one is a more of a circular one. It's kind of cool. Okay, let's put our arm down. Fixed length arm one, what is this? This is a track. All right, we gotta do the track first. Let's put that here and then we can connect it this way it's telling us. Okay, and we'll shove the arm on the track. So we need to do some rotations here. Let's start it right over the reagent and we will do our pickup, that's F. And then let's rotate it uh, one, two. So it's gonna be D um, and then move along the track. Where is that? Moves along in the negative direction. Oh, okay, so there's a plus and a minus on each side of the track, right? So we want to get to go toward the plus side. That's a really interesting way of putting that. That makes it pretty clear. We're gonna move two spaces, so two Gs there, um, and then we're gonna drop. No, we're not gonna drop, we're going to reset because we don't need to drop, we can use the reset instead. Hopefully this will work. Let's grip, move down the track, and reset. Excellent, look at that, fantastic. Nice. Okay. I see. When you place an arm on a track, the arm can move forward or backward along the path. Tracks can be quite powerful, but I'm still learning how to use them effectively in my designs. Could you put multiple arms onto a single track? I think so. I never thought to try that. See, Anateus is quite creative, and he's telling people, yeah, he'll have to experiment later. And that means probably we can experiment later because we are essentially um, Anateus. Right, next thing, transmutation. To perform transmutations, we use glyphs. For example, say I want to calcify an element. You'd place a glyph of calcification on the board and move the element you want to calcify over it. Anateus, I mean, yes, that's correct, but at least let me go through the explanation first. I got all the explanation I needed. So he's already starting to apply his knowledge of how to do it by hand into the machine world. All right, use a piston arm and a glyph of calcification to turn the reagent, a fire atom, that's this one, into the product, a salt atom, and move it to the product output. Okay, so let's get our arm. We need to make sure that this goes um, we need to change the distance. We're going to have to rotate one time and then bring it uh, one tile away. I think the most efficient place might be to put this calcification here. Um, and we, we can retract one and then we can pivot one and shove it in that hole there. Okay, let me do that then. We're going to first of all pick up the thing. Pick it up. There we go. And retract. That's S. Right. And then we're going to rotate the whole arm, D, uh, and then we can reset, C. There we go. See how this works. Excellent. Look at that. So as it's passing over this, it changes into the salt atom. Pretty nice. Okay, return. It's quite fast, this glyph. Yes, welcome to modern alchemical engineering. How many transmutations are available as glyphs? Most of the common ones are so far. 
There's ongoing research to develop more, which you would know about if you paid any attention to recent developments in your field. All right. Bonding. This must be the glyph of bonding. It is. To use it, actually, why don't you show me how it works? It seems that's the way things are going here. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. Right. Use two arms and the glyph of bonding to bond the two salt atoms together and move them to the product output. Okay, so this has like two circles where the atoms go and there's like a little channel between them. That's pretty cool. All right. And then this is our output slot. So we need two of these guys. Let's get that one pointed this way. Plop this one here and get it pointed that way. Now, I expect we'll have a problem if <laughs> both of the arms try to move this from here to there. So let's not do that. Let's have three and four. We need to pick up the thing. So let's go here like this. Then we need three to rotate anti-clockwise. So we'll do Q here. And then the other one will rotate clockwise. Uh, no, wait, that's not Q. No, 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 no. Go away. Can I delete this? How do I delete it? No. Ah, oh, that way. Just pull it off. I meant the arm rotate anti-clockwise, which is A instead. And this one is going to go clockwise, which is D. Okay, so now both atoms should be here. I think we can do a step thing. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so then they're bonded once they're there. Okay, we'll stop. That's really nice. So you can go step by step and uh, and see by using this uh, this bu uh, button hotkeys tab and this one is space. Okay, try to remember some of the hotkeys though. I have to say with dyslexia, the clockwise and anti-clockwise, I'm always gonna have to look at this panel on the left. But I hope that you guys are better able than I. Right. So now we've got them both bonded. We're gonna let go. I think of four. Let's let four drop the thing. Say R here. Meanwhile, three will keep this bonded thing and move it up. So we're gonna have it go anti-clockwise. Uh, one more tick, one more, oh no, no, not here, not here. No, no, no. Uh, it's going to go A, right? And then we need to pivot in an E direction, clockwise direction. I think that should be right. Let's play and see if this works. Excellent, oh, there it goes, oh no. <laughs> I forgot to reset um, or drop either way. So let's make sure that we reset this um, and also reset this one. We need to reset both of our arms at that point. All right, see if this works any better. There we go, we're dropping it in the slot. Okay, that's very cool. Yay, we are making stuff, fantastic. The transmutation engine makes alchemical engineering far simpler. You could have been using it the whole time. But I'm glad I did things the hard way for so long. I hope you're not like this in real life, Anateus. Hmm? But this is real life. <laughs> I have to say, learning the uh, the things that come before a, um, a major technological advance are also very, very useful to know like the base knowledge of something. So I'm, I'm kind of with Anateas, but maybe he should have started learning this earlier. Stabilized water. All right. I think that that's everything you need to know to use the transmutation engine effectively. I'll make one more product to make sure I can get it. Okay, cool. What do we got here? Ooh, panning and scrolling. The building area, uh, parts trays and instruction tray can all be panned by right clicking anywhere within them and dragging your mouse. Okay, so we can just move them around. If you have a mouse with a scroll wheel, you can also use that to vertically scroll through the parts and instruction trays. Okay, so, oh, nice. We can move this all over the place. I love this background, it's really cool. Uh, wow, oh my goodness, we got stuff. From now on, you will place products and reagents on your own. They're at the top of your toolbox. So this is one of the very awesome things I love about this game. You can put stuff anywhere. There is no fixed solution for any problem. There are many, many ways to get to the solution for making the product. So that's what really one of the things that really drew me to this game. Um, 
is, is to be able to just come up with your own solutions. I noticed that when people were talking about this game in my discord, they, if someone had a problem, they say, Hey, what's your solution to this? Oh yeah. I, I had a different solution and people were just comparing things and it was like, wow, that's really, really cool. So, um, all right. So we're looking to make stabilized water. Let's put this solution here or not solution, but the, the final product here and kind of work backward from that. So we're going to need to transmute, um, water into, uh, what you will call it stuff, uh, calcify it. I wonder, I guess you could do either calcification first or last. Um, and then we're also going to need a bonding tray with the little bond. And this one, is that a break apart? Yeah. Okay. Unbonding eliminates the bond. And this one is multi-bonding. Hello thing. Right. So we're going to need these parts. They're not placed where I want them. And we have all the things. We have a fixed length arm. We've got uh, two arms and two grippers. That's cool. This one has three arms and three grippers. What does that look like? Okay, so that's like this. This one is a multi thing. Holy fuzzy cats. And this is a piston arm and we've got a track. Now, how do we want to do this? We could do a track. That could be fun. Okay, let's do a track. I think I know how I want to do this. Let's do this. So we have one arm taking a reagent from an area to another area. Okay. This is looking like I want it to have. All right. Let's get this arm. This arm is going to go from here. So we'll take, we'll do arm one first and then we're going to build the rest of this thing. This one is going to just, I want to use a track. These are fun. Let's go down here like that. This is going to be really cool. I'm excited about this. <laughs> and we'll use another fixed length arm like that. Okay, cool. So arm number one, we're going to have you grip the thing that's F, right? Oh, whoopsies. No. Shoot. Oh, is that the beginning? Hold on. Oh my gosh. I, I accidentally panned on this and I didn't, I didn't th see it moving. So I, I didn't realize it was there. So we're, they're both going to grip. We might as well use that. And arm number one is going to pivot anti-clockwise. So that's A, right? There we go. And then it's going to reset. What is this thing? Period override instruction. Ooh. Huh. How cool. That sounds very interesting. I'm gonna have to read that more carefully later. Um, okay. And we have repeat instructions. Oh, that's awesome. Okay. Let's put the, oh, this one over there. So this one should pick it up, pivot and drop. And now this one, we'll have it picking up. Then we're going to have it move along the track, which is G. Um, and then move along the track, move along the track. So we got one, two, three movements and then reset like that. I think that should be all right. Let's go see if this works. Oh, nice. Hello. This is so cool looking. Yay. That's awesome. Right. So we were in the higher end of the cost looks like it. And we have cycles. Um, right. We had a, a, a large number of cycles. That's okay. Uh, and then the area was ab about the same as a lot of people did. Apparently cool. Some people did it much, much bigger. This is interesting. And the other thing that you can do is you can record a GIF uh, and it says it's been saved to your desktop. And this is how you can share it with others. I absolutely love this particular feature. It's a lot of fun because instantly can share with your friends and everyone can see and it and it repeats over and over by the way so it's it's a way to kind of compare solutions to problems and i think it's an awesome little thing so um right so let's return to our menu so what are your plans after you graduate i think i'll be head alchemist for one of the august houses that's bold right out of school why not true enough no ambition could be too great for you and yourself I like it here. I think I'll stick around and hopefully become a professor. You do seem to have an affinity for teaching. Think so? Well then, may each of us realize his opus magnum. Opus magnum. I've always found that to be a rather pretentious term, but I agree with the sentiment at least. Why are you laughing? <laughs> Anateas Vaya found something pretentious? Tell me more. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that's so funny. All right. So, oh, we're in a new place. Awesome. Right. I think this is an excellent time to finish this episode. We have finished the, whatchamacallit, the Imperial University. Uh, and in the next episode, we will go on to House Van Tassen, where we'll read our letter of congratulations. But anyway, thank you so very much for joining me. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>